Hello everyone, so I have another round of rapid fire reviews. So I do these rapid fire reviews, I usually pick four movies and this is one I get behind in my movie watching for the year, whether it be mostly this is straight to streaming movies that I'm just catching up on or um, movies that came to the theaters that I didn't get the chance to see in theaters or not until now at least. So now I'm finally watching them, doing my reviews for them. So these are very quick, my thoughts on the movie, overall score, which I think about it, do I recommend it or not? It's just a quick little overview of my thoughts about the movie. So today we have Day Shift, Carter, Bodies, 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 and Samaritan. So without further ado, let me get into my review for, or my rapid fire review for these four movies. I have a lot more to watch, so I'm probably going to be doing another one of these really quickly. But yes, let us start off with Day Shift. So you will find Day Shift on Netflix. It is about an hour and 50 minutes long, and it is directed by J.J. Perry. It stars Jamie Foxx and Dave Franco, and it is about a very hardworking blue-collar dad who just wants to provide a good life for his 10-year-old daughter and his ex-wife. His mundane San Fernando Valley pool cleaning job is a front for his real source of income, which is hunting and killing vampires. There is like a bunch of organizations within Los Angeles that secretly hunt vampires and they get money for it for collecting fangs and of course just taking out very deadly vampires. So he was kicked off of a force a long time ago but now in order to basically pay for the life that he needs to again provide for his daughter and his ex-wife he gets back put back onto this service but he's put on the day shift which doesn't of course make as much money as the people who go on the night shift something vampires do but he is very very skilled in what he does and he basically gets assigned a new intern that he has to train and basically have almost have him supervise his work and make certain again he's not going overboard like he did uh, when he got kicked out of the service i think they said like 10 years ago and that is dave franco so there is a bit of a buddy cop relationship in this and they absolutely hate each other dave franco is not skilled or shouldn't be doing any sort of field work ever in the position that he's in but yeah he just has a very goofy personality which i found a lot of times just was way too much for me not knocking his acting i found everyone in this actually did a decent job for the performance that they did even snoop dogg is at this and i found it was just so goofy and over the top but funny for really what it was but dave franco's character was just a lot to handle sometimes and i honestly think too much to handle for most of the movie but really when it comes down to it i had a ton of fun with day shift it's nothing really groundbreaking or super super cool it's very predictable in terms of its story but i did like how it was paced how it played out the action sequences is really what held this movie together for me because they were this movie in terms of its total is just way better than it had any right being but it was extremely fun the fight sequences are gnarly and awesome right off the bat they made great use of the vampires and their powers and of course too just the tools that you need to kill a vampire i found was just really really well explained and done in really fun ways without this movie just amazing action sequences again that just kept me interested for the movie for the most parts but it was very well paced the characters were fun i found the humor was good for the most parts i enjoyed it um, a lot of it could feel a little unnecessary too kitty at some points but i did really like it it's gory it's brutal it's action-packed yeah again it was just a really fun movie so i'm gonna have to give day shift a 7 out of 10 and i do highly recommend it jamie fox is awesome in it and yeah it's just again a really fun turn your brain off movie but it's just a lot better than most of those fun turn your brain off movies that you've seen this year and just of course in the past so the next movie i have is carter you will also find this one on netflix and it is about two hours and 15 minutes long Oh my goodness, the start about this movie. Um, basically thrown straight into a very dangerous mission with none of his memories intact. The man, Carter, must escape death while trying to figure out who he is, how he ended up where he is, and who the mysterious voice is in his ear, basically giving him instructions and calling him Carter. So again, he wakes up with no memories of again who he was what his past life is, just he knows that he has amazing skill sets and Jeez, the action sequences in this movie are pretty damn crazy and it is basically a non from the start of the movie all the way to the end non-stop action-packed it's kind of filmed in a way that wants to make you think it's done in one shot but it's very easy to see when they did the cuts and whatnot throughout this movie um so nothing like uh 1917 but jeez, oh my goodness this movie is extremely ambitious with what it wants to do 
it like there is some really cool ideas and drone camera work that it does. And again, to just like the level of what they wanted to do this movie for was really impressive in terms of its scale and scope and idea. But they I don't think the people involved in this movie had the skill to pull it off, nor the budgets, because I found in like the last, especially the last half an hour of this movie, the budget of this movie just falls apart. And some of the CGI is god awful like unacceptable kind of to, to today's standard of cgi it's almost like early 2000s or like late 1990s cgi that's just so cartoony like playstation cutscene there's a lot of the times too where you'll see um people like hanging rope there's a helicopter flying in the air and the characters are hanging from ropes and it's so obvious to tell the green screen and like you can see their feet moving on ground <laughs> but they're doing the movements but of course with the green screen it's, it's supposed to be flying in the air but it's just really really poorly again just <laughs> shot and directed again just 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 the what they're trying to do they didn't have the skill nor the budget to do so it's just in terms of his plot too like geez uh, anything that a movie could potentially put in is within this movie it swaps genres so much the action is just absolutely relentless i do want to say too that this should be titled motion sickness the movie because my god i don't get motion sick watching movies but just with like the drone cameras flying in between cars like swap 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 camera angle camera angle up down up down boom, just constantly constantly going and just so fast and shaky I had a tough time watching some of the action sequences just because, again, I was getting nauseous when I never do watching movies. So it was very, very tough to watch. This movie just so over the top, way too crazy, just again, way too crazy. And again, they didn't have a lot to really pull off what they're trying to do in this movie. So I'm going to have to give Carter 3.5 out of 10. It was really, really hard to watch just because of the motion sickness and again, just how crazy they tried to make this movie. So I can't really recommend this one, but it's on Netflix if you want to give it a shot. So the next film I have is Bodies, Bodies, Bodies. This is a new A24 film. It's about 90 minutes long. You'll still find this one in theaters directed by Helena Rain. I hope I pronounced that right. But it stars Mia Bakalova, Pete Davidson's in this as well. And it is about a group of like really rich 20 somethings. They plan a hurricane party at a remote family mansion. Um, so during the party, they start to play a game called Bodies, 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 which is like a deadly game where everyone picks a piece of paper. If there's a circle on it, you try to survive. If you have an X on it, you go up behind people, tap them on the back and like you're the murderer, you kill them and you have to everyone has to figure out who the murderer is. So lots of lying. But that game starts to turn deadly um, and there is a very fresh, funny look at backstabbing fake friends and one party gone very, very wrong within this movie. I found the pacing of this to get it started was very, very slow and um, to kind of like get you interested for the beginning of it is a little tough too because right off the bat you can tell that none of these people should be friends with one another because they're all shitty people, terrible friends, <laughs> just absolute shitbag, again, 20-something year olds who, who are very manipulative of one another, don't really care about one another. <laughs> again, they're just the worst group of friends you've ever seen, and it's really tough to, again, like or want to root for anyone to live <laughs> in this movie because, again, they're absolute shitheads, all of them. But I found it was kind of brilliant in the way that their personalities bounce off of each other so well and was just hilarious throughout the entire movie. Um, just again, they're so different and so, again, for lack of a better word, toxic towards one another and just their personalities were, there's some really good humor <laughs> that they were able to pass into this. And even though the movie gets tense and you're wondering who the killer is, really, really funny <laughs> a lot of the points. I did also find too that it is very generic in terms it does nothing new it's not anything scary nor i want to say groundbreaking but i want to say when it comes to revealing who the killer is everything like that this movie got me in a sense that um i found that each character would have a motivation for being a murderer even though like <laughs> none of them seem like murderers they all fucking hated each other so so much and you're wondering like which one's going to snap i didn't see it coming they actually liked what they did with the ending of this movie so that does save a lot of points for this movie and overall i'm gonna have to get bodies 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 6.5 out of 10 i still find for going for like a really generic 
film, which A24 usually doesn't do, they still were able to twist a few things around and make it something new, fresh and different in a lot of ways. I found the acting again. Everyone played their characters very, very well. It's a little tough to get into again, the individual characters themselves, but they bounce off each other very, very well. So yeah, A24 bodies, 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 you'll find it still in theaters. And the last movie I have, you'll find on Amazon Prime. It is Samaritan and this one stars Sylvester Stallone. Um, a young boy basically learns that a superhero who was thought to have gone missing or was killed in action after an epic battle 20 years ago may still in fact be around. And that missing superpowered individual is Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, this is about an hour and 45 minutes long and um, there's not really all much that I'm going to say about this film. Super generic in terms of the superhero genre. Nothing really all too, too special. I didn't find the acting was anything special <laughs> within this film as well. Um, the most easy to see plot twist of all time <laughs> was um, in this film. Just basically after the opening credit sequences and learning a bit about um, Sylvester Stallone's character, just basically seeing him on screen for a minute, I had the idea in my head. And yeah, basically, as the movie went further and further, I was like, OK, well, it has to be this. And it was that exactly almost in like an eye rolling way where again, too, I'm kind of joking about it, saying, oh, no one could have saw that coming <laughs> sort of plot twist. And yeah, like, again, just nothing really special about this movie. It's basically like rocky, but with superpowers, but just done in the most generic and uninteresting way possible i do think my score here is very generous a very generous five out of ten it's something again really easy to watch if you like sylvester stallone go ahead give it a watch but the fight scenes the pacing of this movie not really anything special some of the dumbest henchmen or villains you've ever seen in a film it seemed like physics didn't apply throughout the entirety of the movie as well for most of the fight scenes um yeah just in terms of superhero movies thumbs down for this one for me but i'm still going to be generous about it because there are some things that were okay about it, but yeah, no, I think this one's easily passable. So if you've seen any of these four movies, please let me know what you thought about them in the comments down below. And of course, if you like this review, definitely give it a thumbs up and you check out everything I do on this channel through our playlist. So I'll link some up top here for convenience sake. Thank you for subscribing and turn that little ring around so you know when I upload new videos. If you want to check out the description of this video and in my channel bio, there's a link to the Media Mountain, which is my Discord where we talk about movies, video games, comic books, TV, pretty much everything that's awesome in this world. So you can definitely join that amazing community, how make you more amazing than it is already. And yeah, it's just awesome, guys. Sky blue eyes I see a world behind them No more time Sinking into the side